Hey now. Hey now. And welcome back to the show where two childhood friends discuss their favourite childhood movies. I'm Emily Sandford. And I'm Barney Lee. And whether it's iconic lines, musical moments, or just questionable outfit choices, the films we'll be talking about on our show are unique in their own way. And this week, we'll be discussing... She's the man. Warning, this episode contains nostalgia and big love for Gouda. My favourite Gouda. (laughs) Thank you so much to the people of South Holland for Gouda. I mean, I can probably think of a million better cheeses, but Gouda is just the cutest name. Every time you say it, you have to do the Amanda Bynes like hand underneath the chin. Gouda. I want to go to Gouda just so I can do that. Yeah. It doesn't work when you go, cheddar. (laughs) I mean, doesn't it? (laughs) I'll I'll try it at the cheese counter in Sainsbury's next time I'm there. They'll be like, that's the secret password. You now get every cheese for free. The dream. So she's the man. This film came out in 2006. Yeah, we were 13. And I don't specifically have a memory of watching it in the cinema, but it's just one of those ones that it's instantly quotable. It's got Amanda Bynes, who was my hero growing up, basically. She's such an iconic actress. And I'm kind of upset she's not acting now. I know. She's quitting acting to focus on herself and her fashion career. And, you know, we love her and we wish her all the best. Yeah, exactly. She's studying a bachelor at the moment is what I know. Honey, she was studying a bachelor in the film and his name was Channing Tatum. Oh, (laughs) Oh. sign me up to that school. (laughs) I don't know if a lot of people know this, but She's the Man is inspired by William Shakespeare's play Twelfth Night. Which is quite nice because the screenplay writers of this film also wrote Ten Things I Hate About You. Which is another Shakespeare inspired film. Exactly. So Cara McCullough and Kirsten Smith are the screenplay writers. And so this is obviously something they do. <laughs> they love it. They love the bard. <laughs> they do. So what you actually notice with this film is the amount of like Shakespeare synchronicities which are throughout this film. So a lot of the characters who are actually in Twelfth Night, their names and, and and stuff are used in the film. There's other things like the Stratford Junior League is named um, after William Shakespeare's hometown, which is Stratford upon Avon. We also have the school where Viola starts is called Cornwall, which is where Olivia and her brother in the play originally hail from. Okay. And Channing Tatum's character Duke Orsino is modelled off the character Orsino in the play, who just so happens to be a duke. Yeah. See, I initially was like, why is he called Duke? Like it's very like scooby-doo do you know what i mean like it's a great dane's name (laughs) so maybe william shakespeare wrote king lear in quarantine but the bard never came up with a line as quotable as when i close my eyes i see you for what you truly are which is ugly (laughs) ugly So to prepare for the role, Amanda said that she went down to like shopping malls just to like observe guys and how they walk and talk and act. She also had never played football before, so she had to spend many, many hours training to be as good as Viola is in the film. And fun fact, producers actually wanted Jesse McCartney to play Viola's brother, Sebastian, because of how similar they both look. Oh, Jesse McCartney. Beautiful soul. What a song. Such a throwback. <laughs> yeah. um, but he was unavailable to shoot, um, so James Kirk was cast instead. But I'm kind of happy about that because he actually could be Amanda Bynes' twin. Yeah, I thought they looked pretty well suited. Yeah, definitely. So we know Amanda best from being in Hairspray. She was a very good penny. What a Girl Wants, Easy A, Sydney White and The Amanda Show. Oh my God. I lived for that show. I remember you quoting that to me all the time, the... Amanda, please. Amanda, please. And I'd be like, what? Because I was one of these kids who didn't have like Sky (laughs) or like Nickelodeon, you know, preview box only. Yeah. (laughs) Great. CBBs. Yeah. (laughs) Hey, Arthur is great. Arthur is great. Okay. Yeah. Let's not knock that. Yeah. That show was amazing. Bring on the dancing lobsters. Where are they now? (laughs) Probably boiling in a pot somewhere. Yeah. So obviously in this film as well, we've got Channing Tatum. Hubba, um, hubba. Hubba, hubba. What I thought was really cute and amusing was that Amanda pushed for Channing to be chosen for the role of Duke. Right. 
And like, because he was I, quite old. Yeah, he, he was twenty six when he filmed this film. So, and he looks I, it. And I think go Amanda. Do you know what I mean? Like, yes, she saw. Yeah, produce- she saw that guy and was like. How am I gonna get him in this yeah. film? <laughs> She's like, producers will make it work. Like, cast him. This was his first leading male role. So, really, if it wasn't for Amanda Bynes, Channing Tatum might not be as famous as we think. Yeah, we wouldn't have had him in oh. Magic Mike, for example, or Twenty One and Twenty Two Jump Street. Yeah, Step Up. Oh wow, Dear John. Oh my God, he's actually had an amazing career. Yeah, he was also in Lego Movie. Oh. Spoke too soon. (laughs) So we've also got Vinnie Jones in this. He's the English football soccer coach. Yeah. (laughs) He's pretty good. Yeah. He looks like a Vinnie. He does. I mean, I don't don't actually know any other (laughs) Vinnies. The only Vinnie I know is my friend's chihuahua. (laughs) My friend in Norway has a chihuahua and it's called Vinnie. It's very cute. Hopefully not based off of Vinnie Jones. Who knows? I've never asked. Oh, wow. (laughs) um then we've also got david cross amazing yeah he plays mr gold in this film and we know him best from um arrested development eternal sunshine of the spotless mind and kung fu panda he plays the crane oh wow yeah oh wow Um, what a career yeah exactly and then the last person i just wanted to give a mention to who's in the film is julie haggerty she plays viola and sebastian's um (laughs) Mum, she first started out her career with the film Airplane, which is like this really old comedy. Yes, I love that film. She looks so young in that. She's also featured in New Girl, Grace and Frankie and Family Guy. But I know her best from the Ryan Reynolds classic, Just Friends. And she plays Ryan's mum. And there's Hello Joyce. Is the- <laughs> Basically the same character in anything she plays. Yeah, she's just the mum who's always like, hello, do you want to be a debutante? <laughs> Fine. Fine. <laughs> She's really typecasted. <laughs> yeah. So the film centers on a teenager called Viola Hastings, who enters her brother's new boarding school called Illyria Prep in his place and basically pretends to be a boy in order to play on the boys' football team. And um, obviously hilarity ensues. Yeah. Her real brother has to come back and get his big duke out. <laughs> On the football field. Yeah, I think that line towards the end kind of sums it up. He's like, I don't remember football matches having this much nudity. (laughs) Literally, in the space of like two minutes, Sebastian gets his wang out and Viola shows her (laughs) rah-rahs. Rah-rahs? Is that what you call (laughs) Never been with a girl. I wonder why. (laughs) Oh, show me your (laughs) rah-rahs. Okay, so now we're going to do best supporting character. Now, something that I noticed in this film, like straight away, I was like, where do I know Monique from? Mm -hmm. And then I realized she's the woman who plays Mel in Virgin River. So Alexandra Breckenridge. Now, I don't think you've ever seen that on Netflix. It's like this really wholesome, cute little series, which everyone should watch. But we were watching it and two other characters came up and I was like, they're also from Virgin River. That is weird. Like the fact that three characters from this Netflix show are also in She's the Man. Clearly, these films are using the same casting agency. Yeah, they're just like, yeah, okay. Three of you. Okay, go to Netflix. I recognise Monique, who is... Sebastian's on again, off again girlfriend from American Horror Story, the oh. first season, which is probably one of the better ones. She plays young Moira, who is the really, really slutty cleaner. Oh, right. And she's so good at it. <laughs> the cleaning? or <laughs> Yes, the cleaning. <laughs> Right, so someone who we definitely have to give a notable mention to is the guy who's at the carnival who's waiting in line at the kissing booth. Yes. And he's like, you don't have to flirt with her first, genius. You're paying for it. And this boy is what, like eight years old? You can't be in that queue. You have to be over 16, mister. <laughs> hey, look, a ticket is a ticket. <laughs> Olivia should be so lucky. <laughs> he's probably a world-class hottie now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. we should look him up. There was another guy that we see right at the beginning when Viola dresses Sebastian's like moving into the dorm and she just walks past this one guy really like sadly playing the cello alone in his room. On your first day of school, 
Make some friends. <laughs> There's no way to make some friends. What would you do if you turned up to college for the first day or like boarding school? Yeah. And the guy in your dorm is playing the cello. I would turn on my heels and be like, oh, I need to be reassigned. <laughs> like, hey, David, do you want to come to the quad? Like, we're going to get some food. Oh, no, thanks, guys. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, my God. Am I a cello? That was so good. Barney, I hate cellos. And then he's like, Mozart over there. <laughs> oh my god! Wow. I sorry. I'm. I'm. I can't wait to listen back to this now. I'm gonna be like, it was like there was a cello in the room. Yeah. Oh my goodness. You got to take back those words and apologize to that man. I know, David. I'm sorry if you're listening. And you mentioned the carnival scene. There's this girl who is having her fortune read by the nerd Eunice, and um. Oh my god, this girl's having the worst time at this fun fair because first of all, the fortune is I see a kitten gasping for air. <laughs> and the girl's like <laughs> Also, her day only gets worse because she's trapped on that spinning ride as Viola is switching outfits between her dress and her Sebastian disguise. And when the ride stops, Viola's like, "Oh my gosh, where's my fake sideburn?" <laughs> camera pans back to this girl and she's got the sticky sideburn on the side of her face and she's just like "Mm." (laughs) stay in school yes yes (laughs) honestly if i was that girl i would have turned to hard drugs that night where are her parents what a sad day so sad someone get her some cotton candy (laughs) asap No, you know what she would have done? That girl would have said, okay, well, look, I'm going to turn around my day. I'm going to go to the popcorn stand. And then she would have seen Duke fighting Justin. And remember, they knock over the popcorn stand and it goes all over the grass. That girl would have been like, what the hell, man? All I want is a little bag of sweet and salty. Is that too much to ask? And with a giant Toblerone on the coconut shy. This poor girl, God, she deserves best supporting character. Yes. However, we do need to award it to the icon that is Eunice. She's got that summon summon. Yeah, asthma and headgear. I didn't realise that those kind of braces actually existed. I know there's that episode of The Simpsons where Lisa gets braces and yeah. she's got to wear like the whole head brace. Yeah, and there's that girl in Finding Nemo as well. Oh my God, Darla. Oh. She's a... <laughs> <laughs> Funny, you almost said a very rude word. But, you know, Eunice kind of like owns it, I suppose. She is so confident. You could easily see her being like the shy girl who is so afraid of everything. But she sees a man, she goes for him. Yeah, she like full on has sex on the football field after the game. Yeah, I mean, she just like stares at Sebastian whilst he's sleeping. (laughs) I made breakfast, darling. (laughs) And then she's just staring at Sebastian's Duke when he's on the field. Oh, yeah. And she's like, soccer is the world's greatest sport. (laughs) I'd be saying the same thing, to be honest. Eunice. You nasty. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So next up, let's talk about most iconic outfit. And something that immediately placed this in 2006 for me was uh, right at the beginning where Viola is wearing her blue hoodie, her blue cap, and she's coming back from soccer practice. I spied a yellow Livestrong band on her arm. And I was like, yes, 2006! Did you? That was iconic Barney gear yes. in 2006. I think we spoke about Live Strong Bands in season one, but come on, I'm still waiting for them to be brought back. Maybe I'm reading too much into this, but also, I don't know if you noticed, her blue cap had the Union Jack flag on the front. Oh, right. So maybe that was like another like throwback to Shakespeare. Yeah, Shakespeare would have approved. Oh yeah, Shakespeare could have rocked that cap. <laughs> Hide the bald, you know? Oh, oh yeah. He, did he have one of those like he haircuts had, with like the Mr. Burns like Krusty the Clown haircut? Yes. Oh Shakespeare. Oh, good at plays, not good at comb overs. Comb overs. <laughs> the outfit that I wanted to give a mention to is the debutante dress. You know, like the really pink, puffy one that her mum wants her to wear. It's got like kind of taffeta underneath and it's kind of like that hard material. It's like a shiny satin, but not soft satin. Yes. 
And I mean, it must have been hard to move him because there's that nightmare scene where she's running, playing football in it. Nightmare. I Literally. Know. But remember, she like kicks the ball and like somehow, I don't know how you can kick a ball that hard that it mm. kind of flips in the air. And she like lands on her back, probably breaking her spine. Yeah, got a feel for her. And grass stains are really hard to get out. So. Yeah. Thankfully, she didn't have to wear that to the actual debutante ball in the end. She got to wear that nice green one. But yeah, she looks stunning. And also I liked the dress she wore to the little luncheon, the kind of like white dress with, I mean, it was a bit weird because it had a lot of like seatbelt straps on the like bodice part. Yeah. You know. I feel like that's something you could actually get at Zara now. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Okay. So I'll tell you who else looked good at the debutante ball. Channing. Oh my God. Channing Tatum in a tux. Are you kidding? He looked good in that tux, but you know, he looked even better in those gray sweatpants. And those shorts. And the towel in the shower. And in the gym. (laughs) (laughs) Basically, most iconic outfit is Channing Tatum in as little clothing as possible. (laughs) Basically. He's a dude. He's a hunky dude. (laughs) You got that right. (laughs) But we need to award most iconic outfit to Viola in her Sebastian disguise. And there is a very specific outfit that we're talking about. Oh, yes, it is. When she has that tampon in her nose. (laughs) (laughs) Which is a very smart idea. Genius. I was thinking this like, oh, my God, that makes perfect sense. I feel like they probably do use the use tampons for that. Yeah, why not? Why not? I mean, if they weren't before, they are now. Yeah, but Viola looks amazing in that whole getup. She's got the boy wig, the fake eyebrows, the fake sideburns. The white sneakers, the beige chino trousers, the blue blazer. And a tampon on your nose is the perfect accessory. And if someone out there doesn't dress up as that for Halloween 2021, (gasps) I'll be very disappointed. Why don't you do that look? And then I'll do Viola in the pink dress. Okay, sounds good. She's the man. <laughs> A man, duh. <laughs> ah! Okay, so now we're going to do best musical moment. Okay, look, guys, this film doesn't have a lot of musical moments. And also the soundtrack is a bit meh. <laughs> I really liked No Sleep Tonight, um, which was the song that plays in the opening credits, because do you remember those toys called Hit Clips where you would collect them for different songs and you could play like 30 seconds from, or no, like 20 seconds from them. Yeah, off the chorus. And um, I had the one for No Sleep Tonight and it was very good. I'd play it nonstop. I had No Sleep Tonight. (laughs) Your parents had No Sleep Tonight. Oh, Bonnie, please. (laughs) Can we actually give a shout out, though, to Viola's ringtone? But obviously it's Sebastian's. The ringtone is Barbie Girl. By Aqua. Yeah, Barbie Girl by Aqua. An iconic song. I had the Aqua album. Yeah. I was like, no, the single's great, but I need to hear more. And oh my gosh, so many gems. You had Dr. Jones. (gasps) I used to love that one. Yeah, right? Dr. Jones. Jones, call me Dr. Jones. Jones, Dr. Jones, get up now, get up now. Wow. (laughs) Yeah, wow. That was brilliant. Um, I'm still waiting for Malcolm's song. I see through your window while I'm standing on a tree outside. (laughs) I mean, when's that going to drop on iTunes? Yeah, give him the Brit. Oh, it's coming. Don't you worry. <laughs> we also have Gold Frap, Ooh La La, which is one of those. I feel like that song was everywhere in the mid noughties. So that was really fun to hear again. Definitely. But the best musical moment has to be Principal Gold's welcome song when he calls Sebastian to his office for the first time. Yeah, it's just a shame the cello boy wasn't there to do backing music. Oh my God, could you imagine how iconic that would have been? Yes, exactly. So if you don't remember the scene, um, Viola's kind of like half stuck to the filing cabinet because the bandages she's used to kind of squish her boobs down is stuck in the drawer. So she can't move. She's kind of just like resting, trying to disguise the fact she's stuck. And um, the principal comes over, puts his arm up on the filing cabinet as well. And he's like... I just wanted to welcome you to Illyria. And Emily, I think you need to do this rendition. 
It's so good. Okay. Welcome to Illyria. Welcome, 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 welcome to Illyria. Or something like that. Woo! <laughs> Woo! I mean, that is a very nice way to greet someone. I'd feel welcome. Yeah. <laughs> that was amazing. Yeah, his glasses scare me. But it's fine, because <laughs> he gave me a nice song. <laughs> You'd be like, welcome, welcome. And I'd be like, goodbye, 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 goodbye. So now we're going to do best quotes. Now, the reason the quotes in this film are so good is because Amanda Bynes has like the best delivery. And she's like, ridiculous. And (laughs) dude. And Sebastian. I don't know. Yeah. (laughs) You know what I'm talking about. She is so amazing. Honestly, anything she says in this movie is hilarious. Just based on the voice. So when she first arrives at the dorm and she's like, I can do this. I am a dude. I am a hunky dude. I am a badass hunky dude. (laughs) And then she like, she forgets as soon as she walks into the dorm. She's like, hey. (coughs) Hey. (laughs) That is so aggressive. You're like overly aggressive. They're like, oh, hi. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Those boys. So, so funny. There's that bit where she realizes Duke has been punched in the face and she's like, oh my God, you're bleeding. Are you okay? And then she checks herself. She's like, I mean, suck it up. Be a man. Wrap some dirt in it. (laughs) No. Oh my gosh. That's so (laughs) And also, and then in that same scene, we're given the gem that is, what does your heart tell you? Uh, I mean, which one would you rather see naked? She's so good. Oh my God. So, she's so talented. She, she is amazing. And then also the bit where she, like the ball hits her in the crotch area. Yeah. And she's like, oh, for the love of God, it burns. Yeah. <laughs> like, it burns. Yeah, I don't really know where she got that from. That has happened to me before. And trust me, it does not burn. It's just like, oh, I'm dying. Yeah. Maybe if you wax your balls, that might burn. <laughs> Ouchie, ouchie, ouchie. Um, there's another funny bit when she like doesn't want to take off her jumper when she's playing football and she's like, I'm allergic to the sun. <laughs> and Vinnie Jones, who plays Dinklage, is like, you're allergic to the sun. <laughs> and you know, Amanda had some really good lines even when she wasn't doing um, Sebastian. There's an iconic scene where she's trying to get onto the boys soccer team at the beginning of the film. And Justin, her boyfriend's like, Viola, end of discussion. And she's like, fine, end of relationship. It's those kind of lines that you pick up and you're like, I really want to use this one day. Yeah. I don't want anyone to dump me, but I'm going to use it. I've got it back in my head. You know, that's just a reminder for everyone. That line is there if you need it. Yes. Keep Um, it in your back pocket. Definitely. She also has an iconic comeback line, which is, does he have your number? 1 800 biatch? <laughs> biatch! Yeah. I'm obsessed with the word biatch. That is amazing. Let's bring that back. Definitely. Uh, there's a really funny quote actually when Viola's mom is like, she's talking about Justin. Yeah. Um, because Viola's like, I broke up with him. And then she's like, but he's so handsome and rugged and chiseled and great. <laughs> then why don't you date him, mom? You've reminded me of that other scene where the woman that's running the debutante luncheon kind of leans over to Viola and is like, Viola, darling, remember, two like you have a secret. (laughs) And Viola's like, this isn't going to work in a podcast setting, but she's like, like eating like that. (laughs) Big chicken drumstick. (laughs) Yeah, ew, who's serving a big chicken drumstick at a luncheon? I hate that rule when people are like, you've got to chew your food like 20 or like, 50 times. 40 times 40 or something. times like who does that i'm hungry now i know <laughs> exactly it's like five bites oh yeah or like i almost <laughs> i nearly had a near-death experience with a mini egg earlier i threw it into my mouth and it almost just went all the way down <laughs> so um yeah definitely not doing that that 40 chews rule no i wonder if that's like the first lesson you learn at etiquette school maybe do you like you have a secret <laughs> But the most iconic quote has to be that incredible scene in the pizza parlor where Monique comes in trying to find Sebastian. Viola's like, 
it like she, i can't let her get too close to see me so she's going through all these ways to kind of cover her face she's like holding a massive pile of pizza boxes like some like water jugs uh like a load of menus and um she finally breaks up with monique with this amazing line when I close my eyes, I see you for what you truly are, which is ugly. <laughs> and the Oscar goes to... <laughs> so next we're on, can we discuss? First of all, I want to talk about how amazing Illyria the school is. The facilities are amazing. <laughs> and... I don't know what it is about these type of teen films, but there is always a marching band (laughs) just like stomping down the hallway like, you're a grand old flag. You're like, (laughs) what? It's the first day. When did you have time to prepare? Yes. If you're American and you're listening to this podcast, can you please DM us at Hey Now Hey Now on Instagram and just like let us know if you had a brass band in your high school because this is just not common in England at all. Not at all. No, no, no. But I, I wish it was. It's your first day to... <laughs> Leary, yeah, Leary, yeah. Welcome, 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 welcome. <laughs> I also don't understand when Viola's walking down the corridor to find her dorm. There's like a million people running around in the hallway. Like someone's like on a wheelie chair. Like some people are playing hockey. Uh, other people are just like literally just like... Looks like they're just running laps down this corridor. Guys, calm down. Someone's going to get hurt. You'd be a good Mr. Gold. Oh my God. I would be all monitor for sure. (laughs) And in my spare time, little cello solos. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) I lost it. Mozart's rolling in his grave. Um, What I really wanted to discuss is, you know, the part where Sebastian is like escaping his room via the window, out the window because he... um, He's going to go to London. That is such a teen movie trope. Like, oh, I've got to get out the window. Use the door. Yeah, just ask Viola to be a decoy. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, so he climbs out of the window and she's like, you know, what about school? And he's like, well, I don't need trigonometry to be a musician. Yeah. Which got me thinking, like, when have we ever used Pi or Pythagoras theorem? Oh my gosh, I can't even spell Pythagoras' theorem. Such a waste of time. Yeah. The funniest thing was when we were younger and teachers would be like, you're never going to have a calculator in your pocket the whole time. And it's like, (laughs) "Uh, bitch, speak to my iPhone. (laughs) (laughs) That is so true. And like protractor and compass nonsense. Although I will say it was fun for buying new stationery. You know when sometimes your like protractor would get all like graphite because it's been in your pencil case a little bit too long and then you go to WH Smiths and buy a new one <laughs> and on Monday you're like, hey guys, <laughs> want to see my flexi ruler? Oh my God, super flex. <laughs> and those shatterproof rulers. That, no, they weren't. You could break them. Yeah. I don't know. Well, something else that I think we need to talk about is, you know, the scene where they have like the initiation for them joining yes um that was really dark yeah did they have like porridge thrown at them or something i hope it was porridge (laughs) or liver (laughs) (laughs) i mean yeah viola gets waken up with water all over her face and then she gets lifted up out of bed thrown into the showers porridge or you know something else is thrown all over them and then they're just like take off your clothes take off your clothes (laughs) like all right, like, is, what, is this like a haunted shower or something? Yeah. And then, Pervy ghost. Yeah. And she luckily kind of like escapes and is able to pull the fire alarm. What were they going to do if she couldn't get away? Like, what was next? I don't know. Well, this is what I wanted to discuss because like when we were at uni, the stuff that I would hear about varsity initiations, like mm. literally confirmed the fact that I don't want to do sports because it's so crazy. Like my housemate was in the, the hockey varsity team yeah and she came home one day and she literally had like cracked eggs all over her like flour all over her you know she had to like 
ugh, drink like so many dirty pints and like all Yo. of this like basically the girls who were older than them just thought eh, we want the boys to like us yeah. it just made them look really ugly and made them go to like Oceana on a night out looking like a chicken and um because <laughs> they had like eggs and feathers thrown at them and stuff Ew. but then I heard the boys varsity was like even worse like if, if you were on the the guys hockey or the guys rugby varsity like you'd have to drink sick um no. urine i think one person even had to eat a mouse or something you know just like what? just like it's just like oh you're not in the team if you don't do this and it's like excuse me you could have an sti and i'm drinking your piss like that is your piss. that is just ugh. if that's what it's like in the uk you can imagine how much worse it is at American sororities and frats. Yeah. I wonder what the initiation is like for the band team. <laughs> <laughs> you must drink this tuba full of sick. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Okay. Um, speaking of a fun time, let's talk about the carnival. Uh, what are your thoughts on carnivals? I hate carnivals and fun fair however you want to spin it with a passion they are dirty they have the worst rides they make you feel so sick also are they safe no yeah and they're so expensive so expensive if you want a hot dog and a drink it's like oh okay just pass over your life savings honestly it's called winter wonderland because it's winter and you wonder why you've spent eight quid on a fun fair ride <laughs> I am proud to say I've never been to Winter Wonderland. Oh, it, it, the rides make you feel like you're going to die because they're so shaky and <laughs> rusty. And you spend so much money. The only good thing about carnivals is churros. Oh, I could go for a churros. Yeah. Yeah. But no, they're so full. They are, I mean, they're outside. Um, <laughs> anything outside? No, thank you. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, I hate them. Although I will say that the uh, the carnival in this film looked pretty tame and like yeah. pretty well maintained, mm-hmm. except for when the fight breaks out and there's popcorn all over the floor. Oh yeah, <laughs> gutted. <laughs> now we're going on to trivia. Winner gets some churros. Okay. <laughs> In December. (laughs) I'm going to hold you to that. All right. Um, Okay, so my first question for you. Can you name me the pizza restaurant, which they kind of like Mm. hang out at? Oh, it begins with C. Yes. Because um, I read a fact that it was a reference to Twelfth Night. I'm going to... Is it like Cacino's? Cesario. (laughs) 1-800-BIOCH. Okay, close. It's no Franco Manca. Oh, that's for true. Mm. Although, after Franco Manca... My jaw hurts. Too much chewing. I don't know. It's something about sourdough. I don't, I don't know. I, just... I don't know. The treats are one with olives. Oh, oh good one. Okay. Yeah. Okay, here's one for you. Where are Olivia's school shoes from? Anthropology. Yes! Yes! You know, bro. Miss Violet's like, oh, they do shoes? <laughs> News to me. News to me. I just thought they did nice china mugs. Yeah. They and... do amazing, like, diaries, books, and stationery at Anthropology. Remember that time we were there and I bought that calendar? I have since ripped out the pages of that calendar and framed them. I loved it so much. Anthropology, you're doing a lot of things right. (laughs) My question to you, what colour is the Illyria football kit? Or soccer kit? Uh, Is it red? Yes! Woohoo! You nut, bruh. And then they do that face paint. Why do they do that face paint? Yeah, it's ugly. Oogle! It's ugly! (laughs) Oogle! (laughs) <laughs> oh my god i need to swatch up on my impressions as well. like that's something that you'd put on your face in like rugby in new zealand isn't it yeah yeah i don't know i mean it served as a plot point because then they wouldn't recognize sebastian's True. face but yeah yeah okay here's my next one what does principal gold serve viola in the cafeteria a sandwich yeah. and an apple yes you know bruh They have that amazing dialogue. He's like, there you go. Have a great apple and sandwich. And then she walks away and some other guy is like next in the queue. He's like, hi, I would love a... No. (laughs) Classic. Again, the delivery is so amazing. Okay, my next question for you. Malcolm has a tarantula. What's it called? Malvolio. 
You know, bro. Yes. Which is not a Harry Potter character. I think I got confused with Tom Riddle's like no. middle name or something. But Malvolio is in Twelfth Night. Right. Makes sense. Makes sense. Makes Love sense. Love a reference. And that's why he's also called Malcolm. Ah. Oh. Yeah. Interesting. Very good. Glad my A level theatre studies knowledge is coming into yeah. use. <laughs> it's not. Okay. Sorry. You'll go. Can you remember what Eunice makes? Sebastian for breakfast. Is it like a cupcake? Yes! Yeah! You nut, bro. Oh, Eunice. Looks delicious. Yeah. Although probably not what you want to eat moments before like a really important football match. No, and with those braces, she's probably stirring and like... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, okay, my question to you. At the carnival, Viola has to be on the kissing booth. Mm. Where does Sebastian have to be? Oh, oh gosh. Popcorn stand? Cotton candy oh! stand. 1-800-BIOTCH. <laughs> That's hard to master. Yeah, You have is. to do the whole stick spinning thing. I don't even get how cotton candy becomes cotton candy. It's just sugar. I don't yeah. get it. Which craft <laughs> okay here's the next one for you what does the football commentator refer to the scores zero zero as got no idea so like sometimes in like you know like bingo it'd be like two fat ladies 88 yeah he has like a phrase for zero and zero two fat zeros <laughs> 1-800-BIOTCH no that's not how it works i know <laughs> Two donuts. <laughs> Two fat zeros. No! <laughs> Defeats the point. I know, I know. Oh I know. my gosh. You weren't far off. It's nothing but a couple of goose eggs. <laughs> We'll know that for next time. Yeah. Okay, so my final question. So they're going to the annual debutante ball. This year they're celebrating which <gasps> number? I've got a number in my head, but this is, I'm pretty sure, a complete guess. Is it the 78th? No, it's the 38th. Oh. 1-800-BIOTCH. Oh, wow. I was not close. (laughs) 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 I mean, a debutante ball looks kind of all right to me. Like, someone picks you a really nice guy and it's just like, date him. Great, that takes out the hard work. It's pretty much like the entire plot of Bridgerton. (laughs) All right, my final question to you. Can you tell me what are Cornwall and Illyria's mascots? And I'm talking about the guys in those massive like animal costumes. Okay, Illyria have an armadillo. Yes. And I don't remember the mascot. I just remember the flag that says armadillo. Oh. And Cornwall is a lion. Think more. Cornish? (laughs) A pirate? What? Cornwall? Pirate? Yeah, Cornish pasty. Who are me, are you? Wait, pirates why? are from Cornwall, like, Are you joking? from the sea. A Cornish pirate. Is that why the accent's like, ah? Yeah. I thought that was just, like, pirate language. Yeah, like, think of Cornish pastico, the logo. Oh my god, the logo. I'm such an idiot. Wow. It's not a pirate, <laughs> by the way. It's an owl. 1-800-BIOTCH. Oh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, no, that's a pigeon. <laughs> I'd seen this really amazing TikTok the other day and it was like, everyone in Britain will know this banger. I was like, and it's this guy like, does. <laughs> everyone knows that bloody bird outside their window. so true that bloody bird <laughs> like shut up oh i would love a school <laughs> mascot to be a pigeon a wood pigeon yeah <laughs> every time you score <laughs> the points three. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god okay well we have officially gone insane i feel yes. like this is a good time to end the podcast <laughs> I agree. If you're still with us, thank you so much. If you enjoyed this one, make sure to follow us on all major platforms. You can also leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. You know, let us know what's your favorite kind of pigeon. That's the content that we want. Yeah, we love it when you leave us a review, especially the honk a <laughs> 
Yeah, you were so good at that impression. I think anytime I try and do Viola Sebastian voice, I just sound like Cher. Oh, funky dude. <laughs> <laughs> Went a bit pigeon at the end as well. <laughs> Looking for a new podcast? Here's a black creator to listen to this month and beyond, courtesy of ACAST Recommends. Hi, I'm Brooke DeVardo Zidenly, and I am obsessed with all things beauty, skincare, and wellness. I created Naked Beauty to interview the women I admire about their approach to beauty and self care. Some of my previous guests include Gabrielle Union, Hannah Brofman, and Denise Vazi, all incredible women. And what I really try to get to the heart of is why do they make the beauty decisions they make? How do they think about their skincare routine? How do they think about self-expression and self-presentation? And how did the way they grow up inform the way that they approach beauty today? If you love beauty and you love getting to know incredible women, you should probably be listening to Naked Beauty. New episodes every Monday, wherever you listen to podcasts. That's Naked Beauty. ACAST helps creators launch, grow, and monetize their podcasts everywhere. ACAST.com.